separate, uh, I mean, a, a feature of, or an aspect of patient power transformation, which is closure tests. So typically we'll be performing a Bayesian power transformation directly against data, because this is what you want. This is what you want to do. You're trying to learn from, um, you're trying to learn about your model parameters from the data. Now there are benefits to actually not use data, but instead simply replace data by model calculations. And the benefit is that if you do this, you know what the result of your Bayesian analysis should be. It should be, if you use some parameters P tilde as, as data, right? So if you evaluate your model at this point as data, then you know that your, your posterior should be, should return the value of these, uh, of these parameters. And again, it's, not, it's a very simple concept. Anybody can do this. And the benefit is that you can really validate different aspects of your Bayesian analysis. You can make sure that your emulator that I just discussed is, is um, accurate. Because of course, an emulator always has uncertainty. It will have this interpolation uncertainty that we discussed. And you want to make sure that this is not interfering with your ability to constrain your, your model parameters. You can also make sure that you're sampling a posterior right and so you can really validate from beginning to end your Bayesian parameter estimation with closure tests because you know where the answer is, which is not the case. When you compare with data, you never know where the answer is. You can also better understand how um, parameters depend on uh, the model observables. So for example, it's, it's typical that you will take some, absor some observable, let's say V2, and you will look at how it depends on your viscosity. But really what you want is you want to know how your viscosity depends on your V2. And Bayesian parameter estimation can be used for this, closure test can be used for this because you don't need to tie yourself to experimental data. You can ask the question, you can have, you can have your Bayesian parameter estimation and you can vary your the uncertainty on any of, the, any of the observable that you're interested in. You can divide your V2 uncertainty by two, you can multiply it by two, you can see what effect this has on your uh, posterior, on your ability to constrain the model parameters. And you can, um, you can add observables that haven't been measured yet. Um, you can um, try to see what happens if you use finer centrality bins or wider centrality bins. So you ha really have a flexibility when you do a, when you do a closure test that you do not have when you compare with data, obviously, because when you compare with data, you use what is available out there. Now, I will, I think it's fair to say that you can use this to, in a sense, make more enlightened decision about the type of measurements that could be interesting con to constrain different parameters. Uh, if you're interested in constraining shear viscosity, you can already know from this if you divide your V2 uncertainty by two, how much does it help? Is it a 5% improvement on your shear viscosity? Is it relevant because you already have too much theoretical uncertainty, for example? So, so really you can, you can um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a versatile tool to, to better understand the relation between observables and parameters without the limitation of, that you have with experimental data. And again, I mean, there can be a number of reasons why, and the closure test might look trivial, right? You might expect that you should recover always exactly a true value. And there's a number of reasons why you don't. Uh, it could simply be because, of course, you have uncertainties. So if you have uncertainties, it means that you have some uncertainty on your parameter. So even if I generate, even if here I put, you know, I put a certain value of the parameter, it doesn't mean that my posterior will be sharply peaked there because it depends on the uncertainty that I have here, the experimental one, the theoretical one. So you have some uncertainty, you get some uncertainty on your posterior. It, you can also have, and this is somewhat of an extreme example, but 
you're, you may have some diversity in your models. It's possible that the same value of a parameter can give you multiple, a single value of your observable can give you the same multiple values for the parameter. So if you have a degeneracy, your closure test can show you uh, that you have this kind of uh, issues. So again, I think it's a versatile tool that can be used. Um, it can really help you, and, and it's complementary to other approach. So you, you, you can really, you can vary the, the parameter and see what effect it has on the absorbables, which is the first thing to try. And this is in a sense a forward problem. It's straightforward to do. Now closure test really allows you to do the opposite. You really can vary the observable, you can vary the uncertainty on the observable, and you can really see the effect on the parameters. So I would make the case that uh, both the theoretical and experimental community can benefit from this. Now, let me, I don't know if there's any questions, but I think at this point I should just summarize and then we can take questions after.